So this is video two of two. The previous one was about um, modern physics and E equals HF uh, and wave particle duality. This one is more about energy levels and uh, using the chart for energy levels and what have you. So these are the pages of that worksheet. Here is page one. Here is page two. Oops. Page two. Page three. Page four. Page five, page six. So that's the six pages of the worksheet. And then here is the reference table. We have page one with some of the constants we might need, like speed of light and vacuum and Planck's constant. And then we have page two with the electromagnetic spectrum. We might need that. Then we have page three with our energy level diagrams. We are most likely going to need those. And um, all right. Then we have page four. Probably not going to need that. Then we have page five of the reference tables. There are the equations we're going to use. And then page six, we're probably not going to need either. So here we go. Number one. It asks about the mercury atom. So it's open mercury and it says it drops from uh, energy level I to the ground state by emitting a single photon. So ground state is level A and uh, wants to know the energy of that photon. So that is uh, E photon is EI minus EF, but we're gonna need the chart for mercury. Okay, here we are. So energy level I, that is right here. And that is negative 1.56 and then down to the ground state that's negative 10.38 uh, evs so we'll use those numbers that winds up being 8.82 evs that's a positive answer because it's an emitted photon and that's choice two next question number three what's the deal with the bright line emission spectrum of an element um well if you take white light white light is all colors and an incandescent source makes white light. Well, an incandescent source is something that uh, gets so hot that it glows in the visible spectrum. Um, and that sounds super fancy, but a regular light bulb does that. If you take a regular old light bulb, there you go, a regular light bulb with the filament inside that glows white hot. Well, if you take that light and you split it with a prism, you shine that light through a, like a sun catcher in the window, a glass prism, it will make a full spectrum rainbow with no gaps. So that's called a continuous spectrum. And that is not bright line emission because it's making all of the colors. But if you take a gas, say hydrogen, and you excite that gas with say, I don't know, electricity, um, pass electricity through the tube so that the gas glows. That's how neon signs work. In fact, neon signs glow red because there's neon in the tube making those colors. Um, and not all neon signs have neon in them. Some do. The original ones did. That's why they call them neon signs. Um, but you can actually put hydrogen into a tube. It's hard to do because it's a very small molecule and they tend to leak. But if you put hydrogen in a tube and pass electricity through it, then um, the hydrogen gas will glow hot pink. Um, and the reason why is because it makes a set of colors that when you combine them, uh, that combine the visible colors that you can see, you get hot pink. And those visible light colors are red, cyan, which is like a bluish green, uh, blue, and violet. And when you throw it all together, you get hot pink, but it only makes those colors. It doesn't make yellow, it doesn't make orange, um, it doesn't make yellow green, it only makes those colors. And then, so if you took that hydrogen light and you split it with a prism, you wouldn't get a full rainbow. You would literally only get those colored bands. And the reason why that's true is because the electron of hydrogen, as it falls from any, any of the upper levels to level two, not the ground state. If you fall to ground state, you get ultraviolet light. We can't see that. I'm talking about falling to level two. From any upper level, you get visible light. If you fall from six to two, you get violet light. You fall from five to two, you get blue. 
fall from four to two, you get cyan. And if you fall from level three to level two, you get very bright red light, but only those colors. Um, because the energy levels are structured the way they are with very discrete energies between them. And so the frequencies that come out when the electron falls are very discrete values, very particular values. And it's not the full broad range, the full spectrum of values, but very particular colors. And we call that the bright line emission spectrum. Let me actually use the diagram for hydrogen as, as an example. So yeah, if the electron starts at levels six, five, four, three, or two, and falls down to the ground state, that, that's a decent amount of energy. So that's gonna be an ultraviolet photon. Um, and if you start at levels six, five, or four, and fall to level three, that's gonna be infrared light. We can't see that either. But if that electron of hydrogen falls from level six to level two, we get a violet photon. If we fall from level five to level two, we get a blue photon. If we fall from level uh, four to level two, we get a greenish photon. And then the brightest of the bunch, if we fall from level three to level two, we get a red photon. Um, and if you combine those photons together, all of those colors all at once, you wind up with hot pink. I know, because I've seen it. Now you might say, why don't they use hot pink for neon signs? Why don't they use neon? Because larger molecules don't leak as much. If you filled up a tube with hydrogen, which is a very small molecule, that tube is gonna leak. It's gonna be replaced with air, and air, when you pass electricity through it, does not make a nice hot pink color. It makes kind of like a purplish, muddy color. It's not cool. So anyway, that's a long answer for number three, but um, bright line emission spectrum is from electrons transitioning between discrete energy levels, and in fact, not just transitioning, um, but if we're talking emission spectrum, electrons trans transitioning downward from higher levels to lower levels, and photons are emitted, so three is choice one. Number four is kind of like number three, except we're talking about absorbing energy, uh, not emitting energy. So it says, why can hydrogen in the ground state absorb a 10.2 electron volt photon, but it cannot absorb an 11 uh, electron volt photon? And the short answer is, well, it must be because that 10.2 electron volt photon gets the electron from the ground state to a particular energy level. 11 electron volts doesn't land at a very particular energy level, so that's why it's not going to work. Um, but let's take a closer look. So we're starting at the ground state, and that's negative 13.6 EVs, and it says, why a 10.2 electron volt photon? Well, that 10.2 electron volt photon will get us exactly to level two, because the difference between 13.6 and 3.4 is 10.2. But the difference between 13.6 and 1.51, which is level 3, that's 12.09. So if I was in the ground state and I wanted to get to level 3, I would need a photon with 12.09 EVs. Um, and not like 12.1, where it's like, oh, see, so I have a little left over. A little left over is only allowed if you're ionizing the electron. It has to be precise, a precise amount. So you can be like, Oh, like 11 electron volts, that's between 10.2 and 12.09. So yeah, it'll take 10.2 uh, EVs and just leave the rest, the 0.8 left over. Uh, no, there is no left over. There's only left over if you're ionizing. Um, so in fact, that 11 electron volt photon will be ignored by hydrogen. Yeah, if we're moving between energy levels in any element, not just hydrogen, um, it has to be very specific amounts. I guess you could say it's kind of like exact change. You know, if you go shopping and there's a sign that says exact change at the register, they don't have any change to give you. So you have to give them exactly the amount that it costs. Okay, so we have 7 through 10. We're talking about hydrogen dropping from level 3 to level 2, the H-alpha transition. Uh, 7 wants to know the energy and EVs of the photon. I pulled the energies from the chart, the hydrogen chart, on the reference table for level 3 and level 2. I get 1.89 EVs. Now 8 wants a conversion to joules. <clears throat> and uh, we get 3.02 times 10 to the negative 19 joules 
they use the trans the the number of the uh, conversion uh, from the front page of the reference tables. All right, number nine, calculate the frequency. That's why we found the energy in joules. We're going to need it to do E equals HF. And uh, we wind up with 4.56 times 10 to the 14 hertz. 10 says find the wavelength. You can do V equals F lambda. We did a bunch of that. Let's move on. Number 11. All right, 11 says hydrogen is going from level 2 to level 4. Uh, and it says why? Well, if it's bumping up level, it's absorbing energy, not emitting it. So it's either 1 or 3. And it says, is that a 0.85 EV photon or a 2.55 EV photon? So we have from 2 to 4, let's take a look. So yeah, when you do EI minus EF, you end up with 2.55 EVs, negative because it's absorbed, um, and that's choice 3. Number 12. Okay, 12 to 14, again, is referring to H alpha, and it gives it the wavelength. Uh, 12 wants the energy of that um, alpha line in joules. So do E equals HC over lambda, solve for the energy. And we get 3.02 times 10 to the negative 19 joules for the energy. This is kind of working backwards from what we did before, but we can, when we convert, we get 1.89 EVs. Now 14 wants to know, is that actually the transition from level 3 to level 2? Well, do E photon is the I and minus EF to find out. And sure enough, using the numbers off the reference table for levels 3 and 2 in hydrogen, I get a uh, photon energy of 1.89 EVs. It checks out. 19. Okay, 19 says photon with an energy of 9.440 EVs hits hydrogen in the ground state. Why is the photon not absorbed? Well, we saw in the other problem that just to get from level 1 to level 2, you need at least 10.2 EVs. So 9.4 EVs is not going to do it. And it's not like the electron or the photon is absorbed and then kicked back out. It's just simply ignored. Um, so the photon energy is too small and uh, it's not going to interact with the hydrogen atom. So that's choice three. Okay, let's jump to 23. We got mercury now and we have a photon wavelength and it says it hits mercury in the ground state. 23 wants to know what's the energy in joules e equals hc over lambda. Squeezed it in over there, 8.69 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. 24, convert to uh, EVs. So the energy of that photon is 5.43 EVs. And then 25 wants to know, can mercury actually absorb it? Well, it said that mercury is starting in the ground state. So let's see if 5.43 EVs gets us anywhere. So yeah, this one's interesting in that um, we know the energy of the photon. It's 5.43 EVs, and I'm actually going to write that in as negative because it's an absorbed photon, so negative 5.43 EVs. And we're starting with the ground state of hydrogen. I'm sorry, not hydrogen, mercury. And the ground state is negative 10.38 EVs. So we want to know, starting at negative 10.38 EVs in the ground state, if the mercury did absorb a photon of negative 5.43 EVs, where would that land us in terms of the final energy level? Well, let's make sure we don't mess up our positives and negatives. So I add this question mark energy. I add that to the left side to make it positive. So the energy of this unknown level is negative 10.38 EVs and then I add the 5.43 to move it to the right side. So let's see what we get. So that tells me that if this photon absorption was viable, then the energy of the final level would be negative 4.95. Let's see if there's a level of mercury with that energy, negative 4.95. Hey, would you look at that? Level D. Level D is negative 4.95. So yeah, you bet, actually. The mercury can absorb that photon if it's in the ground state. It would take it from level A to level D. So yes, the photon is absorbed. Um, as for the explanation, it's in the math, and that E photon is EI minus EF. 
Number 30 says, if you're starting at level 2 and you're dropping to level 1, what kind of photon do you get? Um, if you were listening before, when I explained this, I said that anything falling to level 1 is going to give you an ultraviolet photon. So 30 is choice 1, ultraviolet. Now, um, you could say, well, why exactly is that so? And you could say, because Hessel said so. It's not because Hessel said so. Right? If, I mean, they can work through the math, but if you do E photon is EI minus EF for all of those transitions, level 6 to 1, 5 to 1, 4 to 1, 3 to 1, 2 to 1. And then you take all of those energies and electron volts, and you convert them all to joules, and then you do E equals HF for every single transition, and you look up all of those frequencies, they are all going to land you in ultraviolet. Um, you can run through that math if you like. Trust me, it's what happens. I'm saving a lot of time here by, the, by not actually doing the math, but that's how you would actually figure that out. So 30 is 1. 32 is an interesting question, um, and it really just requires you to match up what's there to what the sample is, but this is actually how they figure out what elements are within a sample. They take a look at a sample of gas, and then based on the, um, the lines, the uh, emission lines or absorption lines from the gas, they can match it up to known element spectrums, spectra, and then figure out what elements are there. Um, that seems really, really hard, but we have ridiculously uh, precise spectroscopes, um, and they can do this with gases, but they especially do it with stars. That's how we know that most stars are made up of hydrogen and helium. It's like, how the heck do you know that without taking a scoop of a star? Uh, we know that because of the um, spectra that come from comes from stars. If you shine white light, the white light of the sun through a prism on the wall, it looks like an unbroken spectrum. But if you blow up that spectrum in a very dark room, there will actually be black bands there. There's an absorption spectrum. And by analyzing that absorption spectrum, they were able to figure out what gases are in the sun. I think I've said that before somewhere else, but that's a fun fact. Uh, the Greek word for sun is helios. Um, hence, the heliocentric model of the solar system goes around the sun. Um, but that is why helium is called helium, because it was found in the sun's light first. It was named after the sun. So yeah, I actually took us back to number 32 to actually look at the sample and then play the matching game. So we look at element A, and it does look like th these lines are close to each other, but these lines here are missing, so it is not element A. And element B is looking good. We have a matchup right here that's pretty much right in line. And then we have a line right over here. So yeah, element B is, is uh, has potential. As does element C. I can see the twin lines over here with these twin lines there. This line here and this line there. Element C is looking good. And then element D, you'd be like, oh, look, element D, this, this line right over here matches up with D. But D has a line here that is absent there. There's a line here that's absent there. There's a pair here. Absent. It's Yeah, it's not D. So B and C, but not A and D. Is that a choice? Yep, choice three, B and C. 36 through 39 come as a set. So I'm going to start a new page here. And we're almost done. We got this set, and then 47 through 50, and we'll be done. So 36 to 38 is a problem set we've seen before. We're in hydrogen going from 6 to 2. 36 wants the energy in EVs. We use the chart for that. 37 convert to joules. Then use that energy in joules to do E equals HF and number 38. So let's just bang those out. Boom. So there's the set of that. 36, 3.02 EVs. 37, that converts to 4.03 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. The frequency when you saw for it is 7.29 times 10 to the 14 hertz. And then 39 says, is that the only one possible? Before we move on to that, I feel like they cheated the classic follow-up when they're like, what kind, what type of light is that? And if it's visible, what color? 7.29 times 10 to the 14. Let's take a look. 7 point, these are all, all the 10 to the 14s are, are down and visible. 7.29 times 10 to the 14 falls between 6.59 times 10 to the 14 and 7.69 times 10 to the 14. It is violet light. Like I said, if you transition from 6 to 2 in hydrogen, 
you get violet visible light. But they didn't ask that, so okay, fine. Uh, number 39, is that the is that the only energy or frequency that an electron in N equals 6 of hydrogen could emit? Um, that's kind of a weird question, but here's what they're actually getting at. And if we look at the diagram for hydrogen, we're starting at level 6, and we're going to level 2, and it says, is that the only energy that the electron could emit falling from 6 to 2? And the answer is no, because if is it the only energy in, in one jump? Yes, but you could stop off. You could go from 6 to 5 and then 5 to 2. I'm sorry, that was I did that 6 to 3, then 3 to 2. Or you can go 6 to 4 and then 4 to 2. You can go 6 to 5 then 5 to 2, and then you can even do little stops, like 6 to 5, 5 to 4, 4 to 3, 3 to 2. And every time you transition, every single one of those drops, you're emitting another photon. Um, so let's just say that you started at level 6 and went to level 2, but you went 6 to 5, took a break, 5 to 4, took a little rest, 4 to 3, took a vacay, and then 3 to 2. Well, that is... One, two, three, four transitions. That's four separate photons. Um, all of smaller energies than the photon that you would get, than the one photon you would get going from six to two. But point is, six straight to two is not your only option. Um, so no, the electron can emit other energies if it stops at other energy levels on the way. Um, let me write that down. I feel I just confused myself with that explanation, but I can summarize it. And we round out the problem set with a classic. Uh, this guy is Mercury. We're going from level B to a higher energy level when it absorbs a single photon of 3.06 EVs. Um, it's 47 wants to know the energy level it goes up to. 48 says convert to joules. 49 says find the frequency and 50 says classify so let's take a look all right 47 um energy level of b is negative 5.74 evs which i pulled from the chart for mercury and i get that the energy of the final level is negative 2.68 evs so let's consult so there's level b at negative 5.74 evs and i found negative 2.68 evs and that is level f so we say E photon is EI minus EF. It is literally, not just F as in final, but literally level F. 48 says convert that original photon, the 3.06 EVs, to joules. By the way, in 47, I made that E photon negative because it's an absorbed photon. Absorbed energy is negative, admitted energy is positive. But 3.06 EVs is how many joules? Let's see. So there's 48, that is 4.9 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Now for 49, it wants to know what is the frequency. So there's our frequency, 7.38 times 10 to the 14 hertz. 50 says classify it, I bet it's visible, let's take a look. 7.38 times 10 to the 14, that's above 6.59 times 10 to the 14. Oops, that's above this guy and it is below 7.69, so I am thinking that in between those two, that gets us visible violet light. And there you have it, that was the last question in the set. So yeah, I hope that helped, um, hope you learned something, uh, maybe even, you know, how neon signs work, like if you see, you know, those glass tubes that say like pizza or open, um, and it actually is still glass tubes. It's not some kind of like LED, you know, fake glass tube situation. Inside of those glass tubes may actually be legit neon gas. Because when uh, you run electricity through neon, um, the spectrum it makes, you get a little bit of yellow and a little bit of green, but you get a whole lot of red and red lines and orange lines. And that's why the sign looks red. Um, and uh, we've known that for a while, so neon signs are not that, um, not that old. Uh, with this technology, we've known about it for quite a while. So hopefully you see one of those open signs soon, 
as Long Island starts to transition into being open for business. Hopefully it can stay that way if we are careful about social distancing and mask wearing. Um, but, uh, but yeah, good luck in, uh, in this pandemic life. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for when we do the end of modern physics, including E equals MC squared. That's a real formula. It's like kind of important. It governs how, nu how nuclear energy works. Um, and the standard model of particle physics. Um, all right. So talk to you soon.